Welcome to the wonderful world of NumPy and Matplotlib. NumPy, often affectionately, call, affectionately called NumPy, is the numerical Python package and Matplotlib is the mathematical plotting library. So why might you want to know about these things? So I'm going to give you a couple of what I hope are compelling motivations. So first of all, the exploratory aspect of a lot of science and engineering. Often you have data you don't know anything about, maybe functions you don't understand properly, and you, you have to explore them. And graphing them, being, handling them easy, easily numerically is part of that process. So by way of justification here, I have an example program that assumes that you've got some data that you've loaded in from some file. Notice we can load it in using NumPy, calling the load text method. We can pull in a whole spreadsheet of data. In this case, it's rainfalls for Christchurch for 2011, every uh, total rainfall for every day. I have to specify the delimiter. Then I can pull data out of that table. It's a table. I'm just pulling out the bits, uh, excluding the first two columns. Details you're not meant to understand yet. And then in just two or three lines, I can plot the histogram of that data to get some idea of what it looks like. If I do that, what I see is the following chart. I see a chart which tells me that the most of the data, I've got one, one, one uh, millimetre bars of rainfall here. On something like 290 of the days of the year, the rainfall was less than one millimetre. So it's obviously a nice dry climate. And then you see the relatively small quantities of, or, or a small number of occasions in which you got more than that. There was one day apparently where it got up to over 30 millimetres. So this is a quick look at the data. If you were doing it for the West Coast, you'd get a very different pattern. So often that's the first thing you do with unknown data is you plot a histogram. Notice it took just one line of code to plot the histogram. And then I've added some axis labels in to make it look nicer. So that's exploratory data analysis, a, a very key capability of matplotlib. You may think, oh, hey, I could do that with Excel, but I tell you it would take longer than that. And Excel's a little bit of a horror when it comes to repeating things. Oh, gee, I'll just replot that again with different bin sizes. Oh, I wonder what it would look like if I plotted it the other way around. Oh, the boss says he wants me to do something different with it, and so on. So Excel's very slow fiddling around with uh, copying and pasting data, and it's very fragile. You can easily make mistakes. So this is a, a wonderful tool to get familiar with. With. There's another reason why you'll want to use NumPy, and that is the efficiency aspect. So by way of motivation number two, here's a piece of code that does matrix multiplication. Now you may not know and love matrix multiplication, but uh, you might have to do it anyway. There's the formula for matrix multiplication. It says that the um, ijth element of the product matrix of A and B is given by the inner product of the ith row of A and the kth, uh, jth column of B. That's a formula, and you can write that in Python, in an ordinary standard Python. Here's a piece of code. It generates two random um, matrices of size 300 by 300. Over here we've got 400 by 400, this is a bit smaller, and I've used something called a list comprehension to compute the matrix product in one single expression. It goes to there, sorry, so there's the computation. It's um, a tad ugly, uh, and you probably have trouble getting it going. If you don't know about list comprehensions, you could go back and look at the uh, module four notes where we introduce them very briefly. They're not part of the course, but they're really, really helpful to know about. So there's matrix products, and if I run that program to see how long it takes to do a matrix multiplication, I find that it is running now. It has to generate the matrices, and it's still running. And there it is, done in 6.43 seconds. If I have NumPy on board, NumPy, whichever you prefer, then let's see what happens. I'm going to make these into NumPy arrays. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to do the same on the other one. So I'm going to convert them not into lists of lists, but into NumPy arrays, which you will soon get to know and love. With that in mind, I don't need to do all that. I can just multiply them. I can do m1.m2, or I can do m1 ampersand, m, m, uh, sorry, at m2, and a few other ways. Let's just do it that way for now. I'm going to run that program. Let's see how long that takes. We're underway. Oh, 
done already in 23 milliseconds. That's incredibly slow. I don't know why it's so slow. Let me run that again. 1.68 milliseconds. Okay, I don't know what happened the first time. Um, if I run it a few more times, 1.9 milliseconds. 1.64. So the first one would appear to have been loading the NumPy um, libraries. They're probably some shared library. So put that one aside. You can see it's taking somewhere in the range of 1 to 3 milliseconds now to multiply those two matrices, which before took 6 seconds. Over here in this example, it's changed from taking 12 seconds on a 400 by 400 to taking 5 milliseconds. So that's 2,400 times faster. And that sort of speed up is quite common when you're using NumPy because it, it uses very fast uh, routines written in um, C, write down low level stuff, very, very efficient. So there's the two primary reasons, but there's a whole lot of other things as well. But NumPy also gives you a huge library of numerical stuff, numerical calculations, um, things like uh, fast Fourier transforms and linear algebra, um, matrix factorization, all sorts of stuff. In order to install it yourself at home, then you can, in principle, do it with one line. When I say install it, NumPy and matplotlib are not part of standard Python, so the best way is to use pip, probably. So this Python 3 minus M pip runs the pip program. If you give it the install parameter and say you want to install it for yourself, those are the modules you're installing. Unfortunately for most of you, that command probably won't work. You'll probably have to use a variant. Depending on what operating system you're using, you may have trouble finding Python. On my Windows 10 systems, that's it there. That command would work. When I say run it as a command, you have to go down the bottom left and bring up the search box and search for command, cmd, and there it is there. I get the command prompt. You click on that, and there's your command window. So you can do that at home in order to install it. There is another option. You can install the whole kit and caboodle of SciPy. That's a whole ecosystem of scientific uh, toolkits, image processing, AI, all sorts of other stuff as well. If you want, you'll drown in the uh, range of functions available to you, but you might want to go that way. If so, go to that website. That's all I wanted to do in this. I hope I've enthused you so you can look forward to the rest of the videos on NumPy and Matplotlib. Enjoy. Bye.